past fatal heart impact past painful starts in fact i blast tasteful thoughts and past i back up my actions fact don't ask grab reactions jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap i got nothing to lose because i fought and felt the bruise now i'm not the one confused call the shots and they produce i ain't lost i'm finally loose pick a new so bird's juice i need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used everybody wants a piece now y'all can rest in peace now you're dead to me so peace out remember you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off, Izuki Midoriya, she has been gaining information, now, in the last part she encountered a strange man trying to assassinate Somebody who came to this country to give away information. However, she did copy the info down onto her laptop before giving it back to the man. Now, with that being said, she has also discovered Operation Wolf Spider, a male counterpart to the Black Widow program. Now, with that being said, it let's see, that will work. About a month and a half will pass, and this is two weeks before UA's entrance exam. Izuki, she is currently sitting down at the coffee shop, and she is working on her computer, as she is sipping a cappuccino. Now, she is sitting in the corner of the store. There's no windows next to her, and there's no windows behind her, so no one can see what she is doing. Along with that, she is keeping an eye out for anybody that looks suspicious. Now, within this amount of time, she has been able to try and gain a bit more information on the research facility looking into the underworld and seeing if they have any information on it. There are little bits of rumors here and there. However, nothing that you could put as concrete evidence. Now, with that being said, she did have to exchange or make a deal. Basically, she had to put somewhere around well, $50,000 in U.S. money into an account. If she managed to do that, then someone would give her a piece of information that she is looking for. Now, she made the money transfer last night, and she has still not gotten a word, telling her contact that she can undo the transfer immediately and have his account flagged. Now, the contact does message her, explaining to her that the info, they had to make sure it was concrete and solid, before sending her an address, along with what looks to be multiple pictures from different perspectives. Now, Yuzuki, she actually does actually almost choke on her drink, seeing one of these photos. She can clearly tell that this base is trying to stay camouflaged, or look at least somewhat natural in the environment, deep within the forest. However, that is just the problem. The quote-unquote road or path leading into the base, you can clearly tell, has had a lot of vehicles run across it. Then there's the fact that it just doesn't seem right. And there was a large metal wall there, but that was about it. Now, Izuki does thank her contact. Before they do, at least tell her a little bit of additional information. Telling her that this will be on the house. To be careful. And to make sure not to disturb anyone inside. Now, 
that is all Izuki needs to hear. As she does leave the shop. Later on that night, she does pack her bags. And take a few things. As she doesn't go to sneak out of her window, she walks into the front room. Before going to walk through the front door. As soon as she does get in the front room with her bags, Mitsuki is standing there, in front of the doorway. Exactly where do you think you're going, young lady? Hmm? Hi, Mitsuki. Don't hi, Mitsuki, me. Exactly where do you think you're going at this hour? Now, Izuki simply just tells her. She has to go somewhere. It's not too far away. She'll be gone for probably about a month or so. <laughs> Are you serious? Listen, you don't have to run anymore. Everything's alright here. No, no, it's not. Hmm? What do you mean? Listen to me. Izuki walking over and dropping her back. Sitting down on the couch. Now. Mitsuki does the same, as she goes on telling her that the KGB and many different other countries, they all appear to have a similar program running. And a few weeks ago, she found out about Operation Wolf Spider, a male counterpart to the Black Widow program that she was in. Meaning that not only are there other assassins or hitmen out there, but it means that the project is still going. Now, Mitsuki asks exactly what does that mean? Her going on to state that that means that if even if she were to escape or get away, they'll just send somebody after her after they find her. In fact, she's fairly certain that they already know that she is in Japan. She did come back through the country after all. However, she did use a fake alias, so it, so it possibly bought her time. Now, Mitsuki and her do go talking for a little bit of time. Mitsuki understanding what she's trying to do. She's trying to stop the program entirely. And she calls her a damn nuisance. Hmm? So. Ah, <sighs> well, yes. I'm a nuisance, yes, but if you don't want many more bullet holes or explosions coming through this entire housing complex, or a hitman coming after your family, then I do need to leave. Now, Mitsuki does go to stop her. However, as soon as she does bring her hand to her shoulder, Izuki simply just does one thing. She jumps onto her feet, immediately pinching a nerve directly in Mitsuki's arm, before bringing her other hand up and doing the same for her neck. Her grabbing Mitsuki by the arm and holding her as she does actually set her back down on the couch. Now, she then takes a long sigh, before just stating that this is for the safety of her family, and that it might be, well, stupid right now to her, but in her mind it's all tactically planned out. If she's able to destroy all these programs around the world, then she can avenge her family, and be left alone. Now, with all of that, she does leave a note and take off. Now, after she does get to the warehouse that she has a car stashed at, she is able to pull it out. Now, she then does leave stopping by a gas station and hacking into an ATM to get money before taking off once again. 
now. As she does do that, she does spend the next two weeks heading towards the location that she has on her map. As soon as she does get within, let's say, the city or area it's supposed to be located, she actually does begin to ask a few questions about the local area. Her posing as a tourist, simply just stating that in what sounds like broken Japanese, that she came here with her father and they were supposed to go hiking on the nearby trail. Many people confused. The idea of her being a foreigner doesn't seem too, well, bad. Plus, her Japanese doesn't sound too good. Them trying to inform her that the trail is actually sort of dangerous. And that a lot of people have gone missing in those woods before. Specifically stating that if you take the this trail, which leads deeper into the forest and almost completely through the mountain, that you're most likely to get lost. And that that trail, you should not stray from it. Now, with that, Yuzuki, she does listen to this person's advice. Her smiling and waving as she does turn around, before walking back to the car. As soon as her face is out of their view, she goes back to a stone scowl, as she does actually go to leave towards the area that they were talking about. Now, after that does happen, she does park the car, and actually get a few things together. Now, she does get some shut-eye before then. Waking up around, let's say, midnight. As looking within her vehicle, she does find a few things. She puts together her own little kit. Her black operation shoe, her black operation suit, her bracers, a sidearm, a knife, and a few firearms. Along with at least a few grenades and an underbarrel, well, grenade launcher. Now, with all of that being said, I do want to say she does begin to walk the trail. As soon as she does get deeper into the forest, you can actually tell what they were talking about. Her eyes adjusting to the night, as there is at least some moon moonlight coming through the clouds. Now, after she does get a bit deeper into the forest, let's say... 25 miles, she is still walking, before she actually does notice something. About a mile back, the natural sounds of the forest, frogs, bugs, deers, anything, it feels like it stopped. So, if she is right, she would guess that this would be the area it's in. However, the only reason why animals would avoid an area like this is because of a lot of human activity coming through here. However, that doesn't explain the bugs. Hmm. Now, she does continue on a little bit more. Looking at her map on her phone, along with at least some of the files she does have. Being able to identify an area. The place she is heading for is embedded in the side of a mountain. And that mountain over there, probably about 10 miles to her right, and a very high elevation does look to be about a place where you could hide. Now. She does begin to run in that direction, as she eventually does come upon an area where there are there is brush on the ground broken, and what could be considered 
vehicle tracks vehicle tracks on the ground. Now, and she does look on. She does see the base. However, it doesn't seem to be active right now. So, she at least does have an advantage. As she actually does, reach down into her boot and pull out a suppressor. And begin by grabbing her rifle and screwing it on. Before taking aim. Now, looking through her scope, she doesn't really see anything. Along with that, the people aren't really around. She's not having anything in her brain tell her otherwise. Now, she does go in to get a closer look, being careful not to set off traps. However, upon further examination, there are none. Or, the traps have probably already been triggered. The area around here does look burned on the ground. So, what's going on? Now, she, eventually, does begin to make her way into the base. The place does seem to be abandoned. Strange. This place is supposed to be active. Her clearing the rooms. With her rifle, and anytime she does think about it, she actually does at least keep her sidearm handy. Now, she just takes off the plastic piece on the holster that would make sure the gun doesn't throw itself out. Now, upon clearing more and more rooms, she does find that there's nothing here. Now, until she does come to a room, which does appear to be dark. As soon as she does walk in, the door slams behind her and the electronic lock does power on. Her going to slam against the door and try and pull it open with all her strength, trying to fight against the lock. However, all that does accomplish is pulling the metal piece in the door that she can put her fingers in, into is pulling it off. Now, she finds that she's trapped before looking at the glass. Now, the glass actually does depolarize, losing all of its color and turning into what seems to be a plain window. Surprised to see somebody standing there. Now, the person standing there, they have a mask covering most of their face. As they do at least, bring something up. A paper. Pressing against the window and asking exactly why is she here. Hmm. I see, so the data was falsified, wasn't it? Them dropping the paper to the ground as they do bring up another paper. It's saying... One, well, it doesn't really say anything, it's just, it's a question mark. Her trying to explain it. The data that she found, whenever that contact came to the country. Him, bring up a clipboard and writing something down. Pressing it up against the window. That contact was given false information. Hmm. Ah, I should have known. However, it doesn't explain why we're here. Now, the man who's at the window, he simply just does one thing. He brings up what seems to be a detonator. Alarms going off in her head. As he also does bring up another piece of paper, calling her a black widow and that she's part of the Red Room. Now, he then pulls off another paper, as it does say that widows cannot be trusted, and that widows are going to try and kill everyone. They're crazy, unstable, and, well, 
They've had their brains messed with, messed with too many times. No. She then does at least ask a question. And what about him? She says, as she brings her hands behind her back and leans against the door. Really, she's using this opportunity to slip the grenade off of the, the back clip she has behind her and jam it into the door lock that she, well, she's jamming it into the groove in the door that she pulled the metal piece out of. Now, she then grabs the grenade and does pull the pin. Before she does let go, she does at least try and an get an answer to his question, or let his question be answered. Now, as soon as he does give his answer, she lets go of the pen, and just runs across the room, throwing herself onto the middle table as she pulls it upwards to hide from the explosion. As soon as she does that, the door explodes it going off and shaking most of the room. As she then gets up and immediately runs towards it. Most of the door has been blown open and the electronic lock, it's been destroyed. Her simply just smashing to the door as it does fall outwards. Her getting up and going to run. Now, as soon as that does happen, the soldier does actually walk out of the room. Then bring up a gun and begin to fire off rounds at Izuki. As she herself spins around and begins to fire away. Quickly rolling into cover. Her twisting her leg and spinning like a ballerina. Before slamming her back against a wall. Now. She quickly checks her magazine. Checks her magazine and does count the one in the chamber. She has four shots left, and she does have two other magazines. So, along with that, she does have her sidearm and the, and the three clips. That would round out to about, let's see, 12 bullets per clip, 48, crap. <sighs> Think about it, this is his home base. He has you outnumbered here and possibly even outgunned. Her doing one thing. She takes the safety off the underbarrel grenade launcher. As the Winter Soldier is trying to run to catch up. As soon as she does spin around, she throws herself out of cover and blasts the grenade launcher off. As soon as she does do that, the soldier, he actually does jump to the left. As the grenade explodes behind him. Now. As soon as it does do that, she actually does try and interrogate the soldier. Her. Staying a good distance away and bring up a gun. Saying that if he doesn't want to be full of lead, then she needs to have some questions answered. Asking about Operation Wolf Spider. Hmm. Ah. <sighs> it's funny. Our handlers gave us a mission. Kill everybody close to us. Sound familiar, Widow? Hmm. Why, well, yes, it does. Hmm. Ah, <sighs> so you're here to kill me then, aren't you? You? I don't even know who you are. I just bought data off of somebody and I was looking for this place. However, I just want to know exactly why is it empty? Hmm? Wait, so you're not here to kill me? No, I don't even know who the hell you are. However, if I would have to guess... Hmm. You're not Japanese, are you? Hmm. It's none of your concern. As he does go to slowly stand up. Izuki taking three steps backwards. Now. As a soldier does go to ask her another question, a bomb does go off. As soon as she does look in that direction, he 
moves forwards, and immediately grabs her gun with his left arm. Twisting the barrel upwards, as he actually does go to throw a punch, throw a punch outwards towards her. Her dodging her head as she brings her arm up and tries to tase him directly in the neck. As soon as he gets tased, he actually does bring his arm downwards and smash it down onto her shoulder. Her feeling her arm get hurt. Before simply just bring up her right hand and try to smear him across the face with her sweat. No. It doesn't help that his mask is covering a good size of it, along with his eyes. And she barely is able to run anything across his forehead. Now, as soon as that does happen, he does take a few steps backwards. Before, his movement does nervously move. You do see his leg somewhat actually buckle for a second, before staying strong. This surprising Yuzuki. Hmm. Oh, that's strange. That's a weird quirk. Ah. <sighs> oh well. Now, as he does go to bring up his gun, she simply just does one thing. She holds up three pins. The soldier confused. Before, she just says, catch, throwing what looks like a grenade bouquet. As she turns around and immediately starts to run, the soldier catching the grenades, before chucking them up high into the air, hitting a support beam, or damaging more of the structural integrity to this base. Before Izuki, she leaves. Now. She does have to be careful. She doesn't know what caused that other explosion earlier. Now, she does get away. However, she is surprised to see what looks like a search team looking for somebody late at night. And she does avoid them. Now, with that being said, she does eventually get back to her car, roughly around 4 o'clock in the morning. And, sitting in the back seat, she does begin to use, to use a first aid kit, inspecting her own injuries. Whenever she did slam up against the door, she cut her arm pretty good. And then, there was whenever, the guy hit her with that robotic arm. Her actually feeling around the area. And she doesn't feel like anything is broken. However, with how red the spot is and how much blood is around the area, it does seem like something did tear a little bit. So, she is going to have to be a bit more careful on that. Now then. With that being said, she does actually wrap up her injuries. Before driving the car to a place where she knows she will not be found, and getting some actual sleep with a firearm inside of her jacket, in case anything does decide to startle her. Nah. With all of that being said, I do hope you guys enjoy, and have an amazing night. I'll catch you guys in the next part.